sad. Get out, sad. Oh my god, it's sweet dude, sweet dude, it's right here, you know something, Mr. Tooth, oh my god, you are my idol, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even wear the face paint, I love you, <laughs> you know, I want to tell you, dude, really, I mean, really, I'm like your biggest fanboy, besides, that doesn't scare me, I'm the forger of pain, biatch. So what up now? That's all you got? Queso papo, eh? Tower started back in 1995. What? Yeah, yeah, I'm reviewing Haunting Ground, but first hear me out, okay? <clears throat> Clock Tower is a point and click, for the most part, survival horror game where a maniac called Scissor Man stalks you and wants you dead. What's wrong? Help! Someone is following me! Hmm, some kind of weirdo? <laughs> the main mechanic of the game is that you have to use your surroundings to hide and outsmart the killer. Keep that in mind, guys. Sadly, Human Entertainment went bankrupt after the third game in the series called Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within. Capcom took over development in 2001 with Sunsoft, and that was how Clock Tower 3 was made. Technically 4, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 so 
supposedly Capcom was developing Clock Tower 4. Technically, that was 5, but trust me, this is more simple to follow than the Final Fantasy chronology. <clears throat> But they wanted to change the formula because Clock Tower 3 was a commercial failure, even though I think that game is amazing. But I digress. They added a dog companion and toned down the batshit levels of randomness that was not received well in Clock Tower 3. Soon, they realized the game was too different from its predecessors, and Haunting Ground was born. Now, I can't fully confirm this, but that's the rumor of what might have happened to the development of Haunting Ground, and makes sense, because it borrows a lot of elements of Clock Tower, but we'll get to that soon enough. You start the game as her innocent virgin, but legal because she's 18, Mary Sue called Fiona Bella. After a car crash with her parents, she wakes up locked in a cage, practically naked. As you walk through that gigantic castle slash mansion, you'll get to a room where you'll meet the maid of the manor called Danielle. You'll notice immediately that there's something wrong with her, but for now, let's just accept the clothes that she offered us. I've gathered some clothes for you. After doing some snooping, we'll meet our stalker, Debilitas, who's the gardener of the place. How do I know that? Well, just wait and see. Anyway, he is, um, how do I put this? He's special. He plays with dolls, and actually, he doesn't want to kill you. He just wants to play with you. He wants to hug you because he thinks you're a doll. No, literally. <laughs> anyway, the plot is not too hard to follow, but it's not predictable by any means. It's actually creative in a sick way. That, my dear, is what you will become in the future. Go ahead. You may touch it. By this point, you'll notice two things. Number one, the controls are 3D, not tank controls, as I was expecting, because I grew up playing Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Dino Crisis, you name it. Sometimes it's a little confusing by the fixed camera angles. As soon as I enter one place, as I'm pressing a direction, the camera cuts and Fiona decides to go someplace else. And this is not as bad as it sounds, but for the most part, Fiona's controls are very smooth. Her attacks, not so much, but more on that later. <laughs> Secondly, like I said before, what it borrows from Clock Tower is hiding like a pussy. Well, um, she is female, so I guess the joke's on me. You can hide under beds, closets, uh, bathroom stalls, and the guy, he won't even try. I'm not kidding, I'm not even close to kidding. Like, he'll look and like he would give up, just like that. And sometimes, he would be chasing you, and he'll stop dead on his tracks to scratch his balls. What the freak, Capcom? Just look at it! Why did you include that in the game? Why? Sometimes you can use your surroundings not only to hide, but to defend yourself. Sadly, these interactions are pretty rare and are just found in the beginning of the game. Uh. 
For the first half hour to an hour of the game you'll be alone until you rescue Huey from a tree so that he can return the favor later. Don't get caught this time. Finally! Freaking finally, man, I have my dog with me. And you'd expect it to be awesome, like I said before. But you know something? It's like an escort mission. I mean, kind of. Okay, okay, it's not exactly an escort mission, but uh, it is for a couple of hours, because you literally have to train Huey, like if you would be training a dog in real life. And trust me, as a dog owner, it can be a little difficult. And Capcom, I appreciate the realism, but it's just annoying sometimes. You need patience with Huey. Look at this. I'm commanding Huey to attack and he's totally ignoring me. Huey! You expect you'd be kicking ass with Huey. And, uh, nah, not really. The controls are the following. You control your best friend in the whole wide world with the right analog stick. He has a passive mode and an aggressive mode. In the passive mode, he will follow you, help you solve puzzles, and get items for you. While in the aggressive mode, he will attack, and that's about it. You can't really see it in the menu or something, but Hugh's friendship will grow, uh, just like a real dog. You have to congratulate him when he listens to you, and you have to scold him when he doesn't. This will make him a better asset. I found a trick to make Huey more loyal quicker. Just hit that R3 button to make him sit. Hit it again to ask for his paw. And then move the right analog stick to the right to congratulate him. Rinse and repeat, and he'll be your bitch in no time. Good boy. On a side note, you can offer Huey some food and other treats, but be careful. I recommend that you save first before trying them because some of them will reduce Huey's friendship, instead of increasing it. Sadly, you can't launch Huey from your wrist like we know in Final Fantasy VIII. But his attacks improves in later parts of the game, and they're pretty useful. I read somewhere that the more you send Huey to attack to your enemies, the more it affects your relationship with him, and will affect your rating at the end, but eh, I didn't care. The only thing that made me mad was solving puzzles with Huey. Those kinds of puzzles where he has to stand in one place and I have to stand in another platform at the same time. Uh, for me, placing that mud was a pain in the butt. As you also probably noticed, there's no HUD, life bar, insanity meter, nada. Not even on the menu like Resident Evil. Fiona has a stamina and a panic meter. Both are invisible, and her status can be known by looking at her, walk slower, or placing one hand on her boob. Yeah, really, look at her! The panic meter is a no-brainer, and it's the most annoying thing in the game. I get it, okay, she's panicking, but the more scared she gets, the screen will get all messed up with all these weird Photoshop filters, and you can't make anything out of it. The more the screen is full with crap, the closer you are of dying. And when she panics enough, she'll start running like a maniac, and you can't stop her. Just point that analog stick in the general direction you want to run, and Hope for the best. Like really, she gets really stupid. She hits herself with any wall, she trips, and she has Pratt Falls. Oh my god. She'll go ain't shit everywhere, man.
Luckily, there are some items Fiona can use to reduce her panic meter. I'm probably sure you haven't noticed, but Fiona gets tired. Yup. Capcom added a stamina mechanic to a game where you mostly run! Okay, I have to admit, that adds to the tension. Fiona can also recover stamina by using items, equipping stuff, and by drinking water. Throughout the game, you'll be chased by four baddies, and I'll briefly talk about them. And I was surprised, because their motivations are believable too. I will only get into detail of two characters not to spoil the whole game. The bullet test, which I mentioned earlier, only wants to play with you. This guy gets annoying. And even if you take your time with the game, as you kind of should with a survival horror, he'll appear. And really, getting rid of him is not as easy as it looks. And it's funny because sometimes the AI is just stupid. And I don't think it's because this guy is, um, well, special. I'm talking about the general AI. You could be hiding, and Huey will be walking around where you're hiding. This is so obvious and it's a giveaway of your position. But no, the AI doesn't put two and two together and it leaves. What do we? Get this straight. So the monster will shake the bathroom stall, but not the obvious curtain shower? That's what video game logic is all about. But if he does catch you and kills you, well. In the other hand, Daniel was created by the owner of the castle, and she is perfect in every way. Beautiful, intelligent, she never says no, but her only flaw is that she doesn't feel. <coughs> See what I mean? He bitch slapped her and she didn't even make a sound. She envies Fiona because she has feelings, and complete. she goes nuts. Let the pursuing begin. When you're being chased, you feel tension for the most part, and the music does a good job establishing the personalities of each of the four enemies in the game, especially Danielle's. Every time I heard that, I felt I was going wacko myself. Also, the music works as a cue when you have been discovered, but one of those guys in the tempo will rise up or slow down depending if the enemy is closer or far from you. Speaking of music, the sound effects in Haunting Ground are awesome. The soundtrack, well, I mean, it's okay, it's nothing to write home about, but it's not bad either, it gets the job done. With the exception of the main theme, it hits the spot and it's very memorable. The graphics are very nice, 
They're not Silent Hill 3 nice, but they are above average. Remember, this game came out in 2005, almost at the last part of the PlayStation 2 life cycle. The same cannot be said about the cutscenes. They look a little off. Hunting Ground uses a combination of pre-rendered backgrounds with 3D elements, and they mesh pretty well in my opinion. Capcom tried to have a different variety of settings in the castles, which is welcome. The color palette is very bleak, but I guess, what can you expect? Most of the game is in the castle during the night. But sometimes, it gets kind of ridiculous. Fiona even blends in with the background. But this is no excuse, just because it's a game over 10 years ago. I have these complaints with more recent games, like Dead Space or Fallout 3. A dubious hole. Yeah, sure, get in. What could possibly go wrong? This is a puzzle to get more items. Fiona can reduce her panic and recover stamina with some items in the game, but they are scarce. During her journey, she'll find some medallions in which she can use in uh, these kinds of alchemy stations that exist throughout the game. You have to match certain colors, and the more you match, and depending on the color, the more items, or better items, you'll craft. Easier said than done. Maybe it's me, uh, I'm not good at this, I don't have the timing, uh, I just match X and cross my fingers. Come on, come on! For the most part, Fiona has to solve puzzles alone without the help of Yui. Uh, they're not mind-boggling, generally speaking, but just pay attention and you'll be able to solve them. The map is the most useless thing in this game. It's too small, you can't zoom in, uh, just don't waste your time, you'll probably won't get lost in the game. The first part of the castle is the one that's a little overwhelming. Apart from the four main baddies, you just have to worry about two types of enemies. And I'm doing the air quote thingy. The first are these little blue lights called Luminescence. If they hit Fiona, they'll raise her panic level. It's not that bad if they hit you. Besides, these Luminescence are used later in the games to solve some puzzles. The other ones are gut wrenchly obnoxious are those little butlards. If they touch you, they'll start screaming and attract whoever is chasing you at the time. God, I hate these little creeps. Also, the timing for kicking them, it's a real pain. Get this, her way of defending herself is with little... <laughs> little kicks. And really, they're not even strong, they're like the most weak, pathetic, kicks ever! Later, Fiona gets iron boots and her kicks get uh, an upgrade. But don't underestimate her legs. She'll knock out wood and sometimes even concrete. Besides Huey and your wimpy kicks, you have at your disposal some shit you can throw to defend yourself. It has the desired effect of stunning your pursuers and buying you some time to get away from them. But what's up with Danielle? Como Barney, como Barney, alza la mano y mueve el cuerpo como Barney. Como Barney, como Barney, saca la barriga y mira arriba como Barney. If you're remotely lucky and you have some momentum by running, you can like push your enemies, but really that won't take you very far. 
The boss fights consist in Fiona conveniently using something in the area to destroy her foes. By the way, save a lot on those grandfather clocks. Yeah, sure, Resident Evil has typewriters, this game has a grandfather's clock. Makes sense to me! Thank God this isn't one of those games that gives you a bad ending or a bad rating if you save a lot. So be my guest and knock yourself out. Why am I saying this? For the most part, Huey will never warn you if there's any danger, so I assume there's none. It's a trap! Thanks, Huey. The game is full of them, and there are one death kills, so beware. <coughs> Believe it or not, Capcom played a ballsy move, because Hunting Ground puts its big nose into touchy subjects, such as cannibalism and uh, sexual themes. Okay, Silent Hill 2 did it, but not rape. Angela. Don't touch me! Oh yeah, this game went there. She gets cup of feel by Danny Hill. At the beginning of the game, someone is watching her as she gets undressed, and this feels kind of like voyeurism to me, dude. I'm gonna get slightly into spoilers territory, so you have been warned. It looks like Fiona's dad was a clone of the owner's castle called Lorenzo. Her dad had the Azot inside of him, which is the essence of life or some shit like that. Lorenzo has been living for centuries thanks to alchemy. And hold down to your suspension of disbelief, guys, because it's about to take a beating. What I could gather is that Lorenzo is not only been cloning himself, but also, with rejuvenation, he passes his consciousness into the next clone. Ah, bear with me guys, it gets worse. The thing is that Fiona dad ran away from the castle because he fell in love with a girl. Fiona's mom, duh. But Fiona inherited the Azoth. And Lorenzo needs the Azoth and he wants to... <clears throat> How do I put this? Let me into your womb! To have sexual intercourse with Fiona so that Fiona has a child and that child, in the lack of a better word or term, is Lorenzo incarnated. So did you get that? Great, me neither. I'm glad. Practically Lorenzo's Fiona's uncle. You. It's funny, because he needs Fiona alive, but his lackeys want her dead. Oh, a man in a wheelchair. Well, at least I don't have to worry that he's gonna- Oh my god! Jeez, old man! What did you take? What kind of a pre-workout is that? By the end of the game, thank god there's another conveniently well-placed clock, and double thank god I decided to save. I'm minutes away from the ending, when suddenly, a statue comes crashing down, and I start to smash the action button with all my might, and I still get killed. I was in this little part like for 20 minutes. This is the only part of the game where the game's just like, um, so you wanna finish the game, right? I don't think so and it decides to be cheap. <laughs> Hunting Ground, or Demento, as it's known in Japan, has multiple endings that are required by completing some objectives and especially by treating your dog right. 
or getting sued by PETA and treating him bad. This is the ending I got. Now, I'm not a completionist by any means, especially since I'm a grown-up, I don't have the luxury of time. But damn, there are a lot of things to do for all you psychos out there. <sighs> I miss the good old days of gaming where DLC wasn't a thing. Hunting Ground has a lot of unlockables. Today, you all know that would be DLC. And it's pretty satisfying. You unlock a secret room where you can check out lots and lots of concept art. The three models of the characters such as Fiona, Huey, and the enemies. The whole soundtrack of the game. All the cutscenes, including a great number of ways of how Fiona dies and a couple of mini games to play. It doesn't end there. Fiona can wear different clothing which are all fan service. By the way, I don't have a problem with that. One little neat feature is that in all the costumes Fiona's kick is being replaced by a gun in the cowboy outfit and a whip with the cat womanish outfit. Also, it's very, very welcome that if you decide to play a new game plus, she'll wear the outfit you decided in all the in-game cutscenes as well. I would play this game again just for that. And even Huey can be replaced by a brown German Shepherd skin. Lastly, there are two ridiculous outfits for Fiona and Huey. A frog suit, kind of like Super Mario Bros. 3, and a stuffed plush for Huey. Now, you have to finish the game on hard mode in order to get these. So the game has a lot of replay value. Remember that Haunting Ground was released almost at the end of the life cycle of the PlayStation 2. It was received well with good critics, but still, it went under the radar. But the game came out the same year Resident Evil 4. With the years, the game has amassed a cult following. But I have to admit it's not for everyone, but I recommend it, especially for survival horror purists. I wouldn't say this normally, but hell, emulate it. The game is good, it has its flaws, but it's not worth the asking price. The cheapest one that I could find on eBay was $194 for a used copy, up to $430 for a sealed one, so yeah, emulate the hell out of that game. Capcom has the bad habit of abandoning some of their best intellectual properties. And don't even get me started on the subject. But you can really tell Hunting Ground has a special place in their heart. Quite recently, they have paid tribute to this hidden gem by giving Cami a Fiona Belly outfit. And not only that, but her cowboy outfit as well. I know this is too much to ask, but a remake would be pretty friggin' cool. Ah, finally! I did it! Sir, I should have been the one to fill their dark soul with light. Gosh, Ina, you stinker. 